Nothing quite like introducing a new hero, just to follow it up with the announcement that said hero won't be free at launch. Needless to say that the community has been fairly divided on the matter. Blizzard's broken promise of saying that new characters will never be locked behind a paywall, versus content creators defending the shift in philosophy, claiming it is better for the game. So what's going on here? Were creators paid off in advance so that they come to Blizzard's defense once the battle pass was revealed? Or are we missing some details that would make us feel differently about this perceived downgrade? Now for First things first, let me make clear that I do not have a contact at Blizzard. I was not invited to the recent Creator Summit and I have not uploaded a video on this channel in a few months. I do not have monetary incentive to be nice to Blizzard as much as I don't have monetary incentive to crap all over them because my income is no longer reliant on either Overwatch nor this channel. Just to get the pretenses out of the way, I think I might be able to give you guys some unique insights on what is going on here as a creator not affiliated with Blizzard. So let's talk about this most recent Battle Pass controversy. To get you up to speed, a lot of well-known Overwatch creators were recently flown out by Blizzard so that they can take a look at the new support hero Kiriko as well as the upcoming battle pass for Season 1 of Overwatch 2. Kiriko has been revealed to have what appears to be a fairly bloated kid with many abilities, but according to the people who got to try her out, apparently she also has an equivalently high skill ceiling to be able to make use of this kit. Players who own Overwatch 1 will get to play her on Day 1 of Overwatch 2's early access release, which is on October 4th. If you haven't purchased Overwatch 1 nor the Watchpoint pack, which is basically a pre-order for a free-to-play game, you will get to unlock Kiriko for free simply by reaching level 55 on the free battle pass. At present, nobody really knows how long it'll take to get level 55, but what we do know is that the new heroes will be disabled in competitive play for the first two weeks of release. To give players some time to either unlock the character, yeah, fair chance of that, or try her out in the casual game modes. You can still play the new characters in custom game modes and the arcade even if you don't have them unlocked. And if if you missed out on the season where a new hero was introduced, which should be every other battle pass season, you will be able to either buy them directly or unlock them for free via means of optional challenges that I don't really know a heck of a lot about. That is the TLDR of the situation and obviously people have been arguing whether this is killing the game before it even released or if it actually makes a lot of sense. After all, games like Valorant and Apex Legends do the same thing. If I want to play a new legend in Apex, I'm either gonna have to fork up some cash or grind out in-game currency. And it's it's not like these characters aren't powerful. It feels like Respawn Entertainment tries to continuously find new ways to introduce wall hacks into their game and I can tell you for a fact that when Seer was released, he undeniably felt a lot more powerful than many of the other characters in the game. So why is it a big deal in Overwatch, but nobody is complaining about it in Apex Legends? In short, precedence. Despite Overwatch 2 being a free-to-play game, it is being judged as the buy-to-play title that we have always known its predecessor to be. The deal was simple. Pay once, get all the new features for free, and occasionally spend some money on cosmetics if you feel like it. No matter how you slice it, if you then say that the sequel wants you to spend money for new characters, that is going to create a negative reaction. Humans generally feel twice as bad about losing something than they feel good about gaining something of equivalent value. So if you go from saying all the characters will always be free to everyone at launch too, they're only gonna be accessible at launch if you pay us 10 bucks, that will always, always provoke the exact reaction we are witnessing in our community right now. If this is all that happened, I doubt I'd be making a video about this because we'd all just collectively dust off our hands after a successful riot in which we agreed that yes, Overwatch 2 is a downgrade in this aspect which came at the price of it going free to play. But that isn't all that happened. Because a bunch of content creators have put their foot down in defense of Blizzard, claiming that it isn't only not a downgrade, but actually a good thing for the game. And this is where the shilling accusations come into play, because as we have already mentioned, a lot of those creators have been enjoying special treatment by Blizzard in which they got early access to new content during the Creator Summit. And it makes sense, right? They make a living off this game, so it is in their best interest to paint it in a positive light, so that a lot of us play it, watch their content, and fuel their income. Now this is where I'd like to give you guys a bit of a personal anecdote as a creator. On my second channel, you know, the one that actually makes money, I have recently been offered a sponsorship to promote a mobile game. The money they offered me was far above market rate, in the vicinity of half of my monthly income for a single mention in one video. That's a lot of money. So why did I turn down that sponsorship? While I didn't necessarily think that the game was bad, it was a product that I was not convinced my community would enjoy using. The mobile platform aside, I was fairly certain that not many of them would try the game out, and those who do would end up disappointed. Many of you might not know this, but if I promote a product on my channel, 
channel and that promotion does not get a lot of conversions, that means that I won't be able to charge as much money for future promotions where I try to advertise products I actually think my community would find useful. Somebody tried that mobile game, didn't think it was very fun and might then stop listening to recommendations I give them in form of paid promotions. It hurts my credibility and income in the long run to take deals like that even if I get a lot of money for it up front. Now back to Overwatch. If a bunch of creators try to convince you that some predatory form of monetization is not actually predatory at all and you then play the game as a result of their recommendation, how would you feel to learn that they lied to you? Chances are you might still play the game but not pay any money for it. But you're also a lot less likely to consume their content, let alone spend money on a paid subscription, super chat or whatever else. Just like in my sponsorship example, it would hurt their credibility and income in the long run to knowingly promote the battle pass despite thinking that it's bad. Now only because a creator says something is not bad does not mean that said thing is actually good. I'm friends with a few of the creators who were invited to the summit and I can tell you for a fact that none of the people I know from that circle would ever want to betray the trust of their audience for a short term payout. All of them want to be able to continue being content creators for as long as possible because they feel passionate about this occupation. What I do think might happen is something along the lines of subconscious bias. I'm not saying that hanging out with a bunch of my friends playing brand new content nobody else got to see whilst getting a foot massage from Blizzard is going to sway my opinion about the product. But what it might do is increase my tolerance for things I would otherwise not want to defend. Don't take this the wrong way, I'm sure that the community managers and the developers who were hanging out with the creators did so because they are just as passionate about the game as those who they invited to check it out. But don't fool yourself, Blizzard Entertainment is a company and something like a creator summit is not gonna be greenlit if there's no return on that investment. If you experience something for the first time whilst in a strongly positive environment, like having a good time with your friends, chances are that you'll continue seeing it in a better light than if you read news about it on Twitter. The positive memories they made while talking to a passionate dev team, while hanging out with their creator buddies and while testing out brand new content might in some cases drive them to defend things they otherwise wouldn't feel inclined to praise. It also has the adverse effect that creators who are not affiliated with Blizzard see how much of a good time people had at the summit and then hold back their criticism because they too want to get that preferential treatment. Again, none of these things happen because somebody consciously decided to defend something they actually believe is garbage. Only a good product is going to drive engagement at the end of the day. These things happen subconsciously as a result of the environment they are in whilst being given that information. So what's the takeaway here? Creators are defending the battle pass even though it's bad for the game because they don't realize that Blizzard coaxed them into seeing it in a positive light? Well, not necessarily. I don't know what kind of behind the scenes info they got and obviously I can't give conclusive judgment on whether the battle pass is too grindy or actually pretty good until we get our hands on it come October 4th. And reality is that a lot of the arguments being made in favor of the change of business model actually make a lot of sense. Yes, most people who play Overwatch really like to focus on a select few characters rather than trying to play the entire roster. New players do often find themselves engaging in the rock, paper, scissors mechanics that were introduced in Overwatch 1, but the majority of them comes around to only playing a few characters to improve their gameplay more substantially. Also, the business model of Overwatch 1 has definitively and provably failed. The game hasn't gotten any new content in years as a result of a lack of profitability. Sure, we all chuckle when Blizzard says that they'll try to balance the game in a way that your individual performance is more important than the characters you choose to play, because we all know how legendarily bad Blizzard balancing is in pretty much all of their games. But if you have played the Overwatch 2 beta, you probably know that they have made strides towards that goal. Comparing character availability in Overwatch 1 and Apex Legends didn't make sense because their business models and their gameplay loops were fundamentally different. But Blizzard is trying to turn Overwatch 2 into a game where that comparison is fair. Where a new hero can be strong at launch, but not everyone having access to them can still be fine. Obviously, I can only talk about what they are trying to do versus what they have succeeded to do because once again, we are talking about the game that isn't even out yet. I have gone on record a few times exclaiming that I dislike the Battle Pass business model in its inherent design of paying money for the privilege of unlocking cosmetics via gameplay. But I also know that this business model has proven to be successful. It drives a ton of engagement, it seemingly makes enough money to be worth doing, and it allows the developers to continuously update their game as opposed to having to let it die for a sequel like Overwatch 1 did. So rather than hating or loving it, I feel like this is a necessary evil to keep a game relevant that I think deserves the time in the spotlight. I'm not excited about unlocking voice lines and weapon charms after paying 10 bucks, but also 
also, if the game is good, I'm not gonna complain about occasionally spending 10 bucks in exchange for a constant flow of new content. But what do you think? Is the new battle pass the beginning of the end? Or are you excited for Overwatch to come back in a big way? Feel free to leave your own thoughts down in the comment section below. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and until next time, peace.